Arkansas's breaking news leader. Fox 16 News starts now. Heavy rain and high wind causing stoplights to fall down, power poles broken across Arkansas and so much more. Good evening and thank you for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Stephanie Sharp. We have crews monitoring the damage in some of the hardest hit areas. First, we want to head out to Fox 16's Rochelle Turner where a large tree fell on a home in Maumelle. Rochelle, was anyone injured in that house? And Stephanie, good evening to you. The good news here is that no one was hurt, but take a look at this massive tree. It fell on top of this couple's home. Now, I'm about 5'9", and the couple says that the house, this tree is about 100 feet long. But take a look over here. You can just see how strong these winds and storms were. This tree was uprooted, and it fell on top of their home just right after lunch. Now, take a look at some of this video that we shot earlier today. The couple tells me that they they were just sitting in their kitchen cooking lunch, watching TV, when all of a sudden they heard a loud boom. They said they quickly came outside and saw that the tree had fallen. They called 911 and tell me that Maumelle police and fire were here in a matter of five minutes. They also tell me that neighbors quickly rushed over and helped them gather some of their personal items and valuables. But overall, they're counting their blessings because no one was hurt. It was at the other end of the house, and so we were fortunate there. And fortunately, our house is so well built that it uh, normally a tree that size would totally collapse a home. But this is a well built older home, and it withstood it. Now, again, the tree fell on the backside of their home. So, again, no one was hurt. The family has already called their insurance company and a local restoration company who's been out here cleaning up some of the damage and covering up some of the parts of the home. And also, some good news here. The family tells me they already have somewhere to stay. They tell me that they have neighbors' homes they can go to and other family members who are going to be taking care of them until they can get some of this damage cleaned up. And the power company has turn the power off here until everything can get situated. For now, we're live in Maumel. I'm Rochelle Turner, Fox 16 News. Stephanie, going to send it back to you. All right, Rochelle, thanks so much. And neighbors in one South Arkansas community dealing with flooding and like you see here, sinkholes. Fox 16's Susan L. Corey, she's in Monticello, where homeowners think they have found the source, but not the solution. Yeah, Stephanie, neighbors tell me these culverts are the problem since they can't handle all the rain. And as the water rises, so does their concern. This is what the flooding looked like earlier today. You can see water covering driveways. It's even leaving sinkholes in yards like this one. Neighbors are calling this a drainage problem and they want the city to step in. My whole block is flooded. So how is it? my problem. This is not my problem. This is the city of Monticello, Arkansas problem. The city claims it can't bail out the street, but a proposed ordinance could change that, giving them the right to clean up culverts on private property. The mayor tells me city council will be taking up that issue later this month. Until that happens, though, neighbors hope the water won't keep rising. In Monticello, Susan L. Corey, back to you. Susan, thank you. The Arkansas Storm Team will be on standby this weekend, keeping a close eye on the threat of severe weather. Moving across the state, our crews are ready to activate at a moment's, a moment's notice to bring you the latest conditions to keep you and your family safe. Breaking news tonight, police in Hot Springs are looking for a missing man who could be in danger. 21-year-old Trace Kidney is autistic and went missing Friday evening. Police say he may have been picked up by an unknown person and on his way to Colorado. He's 5'6 and 185 pounds. He has red hair, blue eyes, and a tattoo on his left bicep. He was last seen wearing a short sleeve purple shirt that says Tacos for Life on it, sweatpants, and high top lime green and black shoes. If you see him, you're asked to call police immediately. A man is dead after being hit by a car in Faulkner County. It happened in Conway along Interstate 40 just after 2 this morning. According to a police re report, 22-year-old Brandon Hatley was hit after he got out of his car to look at damage from a previous accident. 
Sad news to report tonight, a 20-year-old South Dakota woman died this morning after she fell off a cliff in Newton County. The sheriff there says Andrea Norton goes to school in Sioux City, Iowa. She was with other students on top of Hawksbill Crag. Witnesses say she repositioned herself for a photo when she fell. And a Fox 16 News update, one of two murder suspects in West Memphis triple shooting last weekend is now behind bars. West Memphis police arrested Raheem Stackhouse on two first degree homicide charges. His first court appearance is set for Monday. They're still looking for Reginald Smith. He is considered armed and dangerous. If you see this man or know where he might be, you're asked to call police. And as always, you can remain anonymous. A 16-year-old shot and killed while playing video games inside his grandmother's house. It happened in West Memphis. This is the fourth homicide in that city in just the past week. Annette Pigler spoke to the victim's best friend who was with him just a couple of hours before he was killed. A shock, totally a shock in this community. People in West Memphis are stunned by the recent killing of 16-year-old Taylon Vale, a standout basketball player and honor roll student at West Junior High School. We were close, like, I did, we did every night to go, spit the night over his house. I was with them yesterday and we were driving together. Vale was actually playing video games at his grandmother's house when bullets started hitting the home. One went through the wall, killing the teen. Police and family members say that Vale wasn't the attendant target, but they don't know yet who pulled the trigger. It's the latest in a string of unsolved murders. Four deaths has happened within one week, and my heart just goes out to the young people. They need much help, much mentor, and much prayer. A week ago this time, we were at two homicides, which isn't great, but it, it, you know, it was well under what we were this time last year, and then we had Saturday. Last weekend, three people were killed, and investigators have been busy solving those crimes, too. The bigger picture is there's a gun issue in West Memphis. Uh, this time last year, we had taken 20-something guns off the street. Already this year, we're, we're approaching 100. With the latest killing taking the life of an innocent 16-year-old, the community is upset. They don't want their family members to be next. It's bad. Like, too many people getting killed. By killing our own kind. And that was Annette Piegler reporting. Crittenden County Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the person responsible. Police in Mayflower, they arrested a man wanted for first degree murder out of West Arkansas. Officers were responding to a call about about a possible theft when they say Clifton Wofford became angry and put up a fight. Police learned he had a murder warrant and arrested him. He's being held currently in the Faulkner County Jail. Police say the five-year-old boy who was thrown from the third floor of the Mall of America on Friday is alive. After the incident, police say the suspect took off running but was quickly arrested. Police say they don't believe the suspect and the victim's family knew each other. Police have had other run-ins with this suspect. Back in 2015, uh, we had three prior contacts, uh, one of them in July. Uh, that also occurred at the Mall of America. He was seen throwing an object off of one of the floors, uh, the, the third level. Uh, and uh, when the officers tried to speak with him, he became... Uh, he, he was uh, not cooperative. Uh, ultimately, he was arrested uh, and he was uh, held for three charges on that particular case. Uh, it was a gross misobstruction, disorderly conduct, and damage to property. Police say they do intend to charge the man with an attempted homicide. For the first time, a Pine Bluff mother is meeting the man who received her son's liver. But that's not the only first for her today. She shares her story with Fox 16's Price McKeon. I'm excited. I can't, I mean, I'm just... Philip Livingston's mother stands inches away from the baseball player's memorials that sit on the living room mantle. It's a blessing to be able to meet him. Sybil wraps a gift in her Pine Bluff home Saturday as she prepares to meet for the first time one of the lives that her son's death saved nearly two years ago. I guess he was such a big guy and he thought that he could take a little bit more and it wouldn't hurt him, but his heart just gave out. Livingston says the 28-year-old battled addiction, but it was ultimately pain pills after shoulder surgery that killed him. I mean, you can be clean for years and one time or taking too much opiates or, you know, painkillers, 
one time can kill you and take your life. And that's what happened to my son. She gets in her sister's car to go to Little Rock for the meeting. Emotion hits Livingston as Charles Higgs walks into the room at the Arkansas Regional Organ Recovery Agency. The two immediately embrace. Oh God bless you. Phillips Livers saved the Northwest Arkansas man from dying of cancer and allowed him to meet his youngest grandchild. I know Ray would be so happy. As the two families start to look like one. Oh, you got a part of me, my son in you. Livingston <laughs> holds on to hope that just like her son's organs saved lives, sharing his story will save lives too. And that was Price McKeon reporting. We learned that Phillips saved two more lives by donating both kidneys. To hear from the man Phillips' mother met today, we've posted that full interview on our website, fox16.com. Despite today's rain, several people took part in UA Little Rock's Out of the Darkness Suicide Prevention Campus Walk. In Arkansas, suicide is the third leading cause of death for those 15 to 29 and the 10th leading cause of death overall. The goal of this walk is to get people from the community together and encourage conversation about the serious issue of suicide. And there's no shame in reaching out and there is hope and it's okay to ask someone if they're struggling and there's they're not going to think you're weird because if they are struggling it's better to know ahead of time than after when things get bad and early intervention is key all money raised from the event goes straight to the uh, to the american foundation for suicide prevention and don't forget it is okay to reach out for help you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. It's that number right there on your screen. And you can also text line 741-741. Mark your calendars because Saturday, April 27th, two big things are happening that could save the lives of Arkansans. Arkansas Drug Take Back Day will take place at several locations across the state from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Also, it's the launch of the Narkansol app. It will also take place on that same day. The app is free and it will help you administer Narcan in the event of an opioid overdose. Governor Asa Hutchinson says he will sign an anti-sanctuary city bill. It will stop cities from protecting illegal immigrants in the natural state. Some religious leaders in Northwest Arkansas say this bill opens the door to racial profiling. The law would prohibit cities from becoming a sanctuary for immigrants. If that law is broken, state funding is cut off. Legislation would also prevent cities from blocking local law enforcement asking about a person's citizenship or immigration status. I know that there's a bit of a, a wave going across the country of uh, several cities and different uh, municipalities that are pushing back and not cooperating with feds when it comes to immigration policies. As uh, leaders in the faith community were concerned about the implications of this legislation, look at where we are and look at who our neighbors are. Uh, we have so many immigrant communities who have settled in Northwest Arkansas and they come here for economic opportunity. They come here because we have shared values. Next month, they are hosting sanctuary training to teach locals how to support immigrants in their community. In tonight's State of the Nation, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says he is open to a third summit with President Donald Trump, but only if the U.S. Off offers mutual accepted terms for a deal. The North Korean leader made the comments on state-run media Saturday. Kim and President Trump have met twice before to discuss denuclearization without reaching a final agreement. President Trump says Thursday he is also open to a third summit. Well, coming up after the break, how much rain can we expect to see this weekend? Kristen, she'll tell us that answer up next. Stay with us. You're watching Fox 16 News at 9 with Stephanie Sharp, meteorologist Kristen Kennedy, and sports with Ben Creighton.